Hello, everyone. I am Katie Gowen, Senior Content Producer at Alert Media, and I'm really glad to be here today to moderate the discussion about situational awareness, why it's important in the workplace, why it's important now, and some actionable advice on how to improve it. So if you go to the next slide, I would love to introduce you to today's speakers. First, we have William Flynn, who goes by Bill. And he is a strategic leader with more than 30 years of experience with domestic and international counterterrorism, military and public safety experience. He is a former deputy assistant secretary at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. He's also former NYPD and a retired Navy captain. Currently, he's Principal and Chief Content Officer at the Power of Preparedness, and that's an e-learning solutions provider that specializes in workplace violence prevention. So that includes active assailant preparedness and response, situational awareness, de-escalation training, and response to injury. So we are in very good hands today. Hello, Bill. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Katie. Great to be here uh, with Peter and to uh, talk about this very important topic. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, I'd also like to welcome Peter Steinfeld. Peter has been involved in the emergency communications industry for more than 20 years. He's the Senior Vice President of Safety Solutions at Alert Media. So he works closely with a wide range of organizations to support their emergency preparedness, business continuity and employee safety initiatives. And he's also the host of the Employee Safety Podcast at Alert Media. And some of his recent episodes include conversations with leaders from Salesforce, Zoom, Amazon, uh, the CDC, FEMA, and many, many more. And fun fact, Bill was actually a guest on the show a few months ago, and he was talking about workplace violence. So you'll definitely want to check out that episode when you get a chance. But back to you, Peter. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome. It's fantastic to be here, and I'm so happy to be here with Bill, who knows a tremendous amount about this topic. So, Bill, thank you. Thanks, Great. Peter. Well, I, I'd like to cover the agenda really quickly, which is on the next slide. And so over the next 40 to 45 minutes or so, we're going to be talking about why you should prioritize situational awareness in the workplace. We'll go over some critical steps to improve situational awareness. We're also going to give you some actionable advice and some common pitfall, excuse me, common pitfalls to avoid. And then finally, we'll go over some best practices for communicating your situational awareness policies and procedures to your people. But before we get into all that, I would love to launch our first poll, if we could please. So I really encourage you guys to um, participate in the polls today because it helps us guide the conversation. It helps us know kind of where everyone's coming from. So if you'll take a moment to answer the question on your screen right now, which of the following best describes your organization's approach to improving situational awareness among your employees? So maybe it is um, already a key element of your risk mitigation strategy, Maybe it's a priority, but you're looking for some guidance on improving it. Um, maybe you're in the early stages of building situational awareness. Maybe you're not currently focused on it, or maybe you're just confused as to what situational awareness is and would like an explanation. So I'm gonna give that just a few more seconds for you guys to get your answers in. And let's go ahead and close that poll and share the results, please. All right, well, it looks like most of these answers are pretty well represented here. Um, although most people seem to know what situational awareness is, which is great, but let me ask you, Bill, what, what do you think about this? Is that about what you were expecting results wise? Yeah, I, I think it, it's a good indicator that um, situational awareness is an important component of uh, kind of the toolkit of uh, risk mitigation, risk management. So um, I think more and more organizations are realizing that frontline employees play an extremely important role. And so that situational awareness is something that is not limited to just security personnel. It's something that, you know, everybody in the organization uh, needs to be groomed on because it's a mindset and it takes training and it takes practice. So I'm, I'm pleased with the, with these results. And I think it's consistent with what I'm seeing, a growing interest in this area for uh, security directors. Excellent. And and Peter, is is there anything, you know, surprising or anything like that to you? 
Yeah, I would say the, the surprising thing to me is the top one. I did not expect that many people to say that this is a key element of their risk mitigation mitigation strategy. So I, I love that. That's fantastic. A lot of people uh, are usually on the other end of the spectrum, which is I'm not quite sure what this is or how I can best implement it. So love to see this. Excellent. Well, let's go ahead and get started. If we can go to the next slide by making sure we're just all on the same page about what situational awareness is and why it's important. There were a few folks who needed some clarification on that. And there are, you know, common misconceptions about it, right? And it's often overlooked or under prioritized in the workplace. So Peter, how about I kick it over to you to provide that explanation? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Katie. So I guess to start really very basically, situational awareness, simply put, is just conscious knowledge of what's going on around you. And you can see some of this on the next uh, slide that we go to. Um, said in a different way, it's just being aware of what's normal and abnormal in your environment and then acting accordingly. Um, situational awareness is both a skill and a mindset, and it's different for each individual. It does require knowledge, development, and practice, and that's what Bill indicated earlier. Um, now, there is a common mis misconception out there that situational awareness applies pretty much exclusively to active shooter scenarios, especially in the workplace. But in reality, you can apply situational awareness to anything that's out of the ordinary in your environment. Could be people, objects, noises, smells, behaviors, or even suspicious communications like phone calls or emails or texts. And that's especially important with all the phishing that's going on out there right now. Super, super important. So why should every business uh, basically play, place a priority on situational awareness? Um, well, you'll see here on the next slide that for starters, the world around us has drastically changed over the past several years, and employers' duty of care has to change along with that. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term duty of care, um, it refers to an organization's both moral and increasingly legal responsibility to keep employees safe and just out of harm's way while they're going about performing their duties. With all the changes that we've experienced recently, including the pandemic and the increased volume and severity of threats, fulfilling your duty of care can be more challenging than ever. Uh, simply checking the box on situational awareness, which a lot of organizations do, or just safety training in general, doesn't really work anymore. You need something dynamic that employees will remember and will become, I love this phrase, muscle memory or second nature to them. Uh, a basic quarterly or annual training video or a PowerPoint presentation it's just not enough anymore. Um, it helps to think about situational awareness as an important element of your risk mitigation program. Nobody knows an employee's environment better than the employee. When all workers are situationally aware, it's kind of like having eyes and ears everywhere. So consider your employees as an extension of your security and safety teams. Uh, situational awareness can also really help your organization's safety culture become proactive instead of reactive. Mm -hmm. Super important. In some circumstances, situational awareness can even prevent a crisis from happening. In fact, that, that is kind of by definition what it can do. Uh, however, I urge you not to wait until a tragedy occurs to prioritize it. Uh, in the state of employee safety study that Alert Media released earlier this year, a majority of people that we interviewed, and we interviewed over 2,000, uh, said that they felt that it would take a disaster or a tragedy for their employers to become more proactive when it comes to safety. That's not good. And it means we either need to improve in this area in our profession, or maybe we are doing the right things. We just need to improve how we communicate with employees about what we're already doing. Uh, it's also important to recognize that situational awareness is a skill that impacts both an individual's professional and personal lives. So it's going to serve them no matter where they are, at home, traveling, on business or personally, at work, in or out, around the community, doesn't matter. There's no downsides or drawbacks to prioritizing situational awareness. And if you help people realize these round-the-clock benefits, they're much more likely to adopt a situationally aware attitude and all the behaviors that go with it. Uh, now, it is important to prioritize and improve situational awareness in the workplace right now. You'll see on the next slide because more workers are returning to offices and job sites as we move toward the endemic phase of COVID-19. With more people physically present, there's a higher chance of emergencies occurring due to human error or carelessness. Always something to think about. Um, according to Deloitte's business travel trends, business travel is making a steady comeback too. I know I'm on the road a lot more uh, and more workers are dispersed than ever before. Uh, so that's just a lot of new environments to consider, which requires heightened situational awareness, something that people may have stopped doing when they were just kind of holed up in their homes. Additionally, a lot of people experience mental health issues during and after the pandemic. 
Uh, and that can sometimes result in emotional or behavioral changes, always something to be concerned with. Uh, in fact, the World Health Organization, they reported that the pandemic triggered more than a 25% increase in anxiety and depression worldwide. That's pretty st statistically significant. Um, and again, it's important to observe and understand what's both normal and abnormal. I'll keep coming back to that phrase. I know Bill will too, uh, in your environment so you can report unexpected behaviors or anything that's alarming. And then finally, there was a slightly over, I think it was a little over 50%, like 52, 53% 53 increase in active shooter incidents in the U.S. between 2020 and 2021 alone. Uh, and it's almost double when comparing 2021 to 2017. So with this unfortunate rise in violence and mass shootings, employees expect to be given the tools and training they need to protect themselves in the workplace or just in their daily lives. Now, as I've hinted all along thus far, on the next slide, you'll see that situational awareness is often overlooked in the workplace for a few reasons. Uh, and I encourage you to go back and evaluate your programs against these four items. Uh, the first is siloed security teams. If everyone is operating under the assumption that it's only a security team's job to protect employees, then that's a hugely missed opportunity. Safety and security are everyone's responsibility in the organization. Every department, every individual should be empowered and on board. Uh, there are a ton of stories where one person being observant and speaking up prevented a possible tragedy, uh, but also many where people said, ah, I just didn't notice anything, or I did, and this happens a lot, but I said nothing, and then tragedy ensued. Uh, second is that leadership or security teams often rely solely on tools or technology uh, to protect the business and employees, or they overemphasize them, and then they ignore the basics like empowering and training employees. The, the phrase that everyone knows is people, process, and technology, and it starts with people for a really good reason. Next, some organizations are just stuck in an old, old school security mindset. You see this all the time. Um, I've heard this referred to as guns, gates, and guards. A lot of people talk to it that way, as opposed to more of a holistic modern approach that involves every employee. And then lastly is the far too common mindset of it just won't happen here. Unfortunately, many organizations are still naive to the fact that emergencies can occur anywhere at any time. And frankly, nothing happens until it happens. And then it happens fast. So with all that being said, I'd like to share one last slide uh, focusing on the impact of a lack of situational awareness. And here's a, a really sobering statistic. Organizations in the U.S. spend $250 billion, that's a B, billion annually responding to violent events according to the National Institute for the Prevention of Workplace Violence. A lack of situational awareness can result in other financial pains as well. There's a lot of them out there, such as increased insurance premiums, recovery costs, and lost revenue after the incident. Uh, there are non-financial losses that can result from emergencies too, like lost productivity, business continuity struggles, and then just overall impacts to your company's reputation. It's a big one to think about as well. So if prioritizing and improving situational awareness can save even a fraction of those types of dollars or minimize a portion of those losses, wouldn't you consider it worth it? So it's an argument you need to make with your executive leadership team. So I think we've covered the why thoroughly. So now let's move on to the how. Bill, this is your area of expertise. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Peter. Um, so. Building situational awareness across the organization um, can take some time. You know, it, it's a simple concept, but it actually takes that muscle memory, um, building that that awareness through training and through exercises. You know, we live in a a TikTok generation. Uh, you know, our our tension spans are limited. We're bombarded with a lot of information. So all of these are elements that, you know, detract from our ability to stay focused on the environment that we're in. Next slide. So three critical steps that I see. Uh, number one, gaining company-wide buy-in. You know, oftentimes the security people are pushing for situational awareness, you know, amongst the other elements of security and safety that they're responsible for. You really need that buy-in. You really need that corporate leadership to behind it. It really is something that transcends every department. It's something that you need to instill across the organization. And many times people, you know, are reluctant to report something that they see that might be suspicious or anomalous. They're, they're concerned about, you know, getting a reputation for saying something, reporting an employee who's maybe behaving, you know, in, uh, in an aggressive way. 
And so that, that buy-in by the corporate leadership and having the policies, procedures, and having the mechanisms in place, even if it's anonymous reporting, is really important. So those policies, procedures, and plans really go hand in glove with implementing uh, situation awareness. I've seen a number of real world instances where individuals have reported suspicious activity, anomalous behavior, something that's out of the ordinary in their environment. And because of the, the policies, procedures, and plans weren't there to support that reporting, there were uh, hiccups and there were delays and there were uh, challenges in, in terms of really trying to mitigate that, that potential threat or risk. So it really is important to have the policies and procedures backing that up. And then it goes to training and exercise. And this is about crawl, you know, walk, run. You know, it's really important that, you know, we do the training, we continue to do the training, we do the exercises so that people develop those skill sets. Again, simple concept, but one that requires repeated training and exercising. Next, please. So how do you get that buy-in? You know, Peter touched on some of these things. Um, and certainly leadership, it's important to get that uh, leadership buy-in and certainly having, you know, good data, good statistics to support that is critical. Peter mentioned 250 billion dollars spent annually responding to violence in the work in the workplace uh, that same organization came out with statistics showing that it cost a hundred times more responding to a serious incident than it does preparing for it so if you're working on the left of boom or left of of a uh, 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 bang you know doing things on the preparedness side is pennies on the dollars of what you're going to be spending if you're if you're actually responding to a serious incident. So there really is a, a cost benefit to that to that element of it. So in reinforcing frontline employees are the best position to recognize anomalous activity. You know, we often think that this is the sole responsibility of security or, or there's an element of management that that has that responsibility. And that certainly is the case. But day in and day out, the frontline employees that deal with customers, that deal with patrons, that deal with coworkers are really in the best position to understand what is anomalous behavior. They know what the baseline is. They know what's normal in their environment and they're gonna know what's abnormal. And, and reinforcing those, uh, those training tools and how to go about reporting that kind of information is really critical. And then real world examples of, of organizations. I mean, you know, there isn't a day that goes by that I'm not seeing something in the media where someone saw something and they reported it. There was a case in the news just, uh, just this past week about a, um, an active shooter incident on the uh, scale of Vegas that was prevented because someone saw some suspicious activity, reported it to law enforcement, and they were able to prevent that attack from taking place. I've just completed doing um, a series of exercises with a major metropolitan transportation authority, and their focus was on enhancing employee situational awareness. When you think about transit systems, you think about the number of incidents we continue to see about violence in transit systems. Um, building situational awareness on the part of transit employees was a, was a critical goal. And that's things like, you know, in the old days, seeing a, um, a backpack or a, or a suitcase perhaps left on a train or on a bus, that would have been taken, you know, at the end of the route and just handed over to lost and found. Well, nowadays, if there's a, a backpack on a, on, a, on a subway car or, or a train or a bus, rather, you know, you've got to treat that differently. And so the whole focus of this mass transportation training and exercise was to enhance the uh, situational awareness of their employees. And when it comes to employees themselves, you know, this is about empowering people. People feel empowered when they feel that they're part of the solution. And they are part of the solution. So really building them into the program, you know, giving them the training and the, and the power to report things is really something that they're going to grasp and respond to. It's, it's also something that is going to benefit them, not just in the, in the workplace, but predominantly it's going to help them in their day-to-day -day lives. When you go to a shopping mall, when you go to a movie theater, you know, when you go to a restaurant, 
you know, building in situational awareness is important. We're not talking about being paranoid. We're talking about being focused on your environment, knowing where your ingress is, your egress, knowing what's happening in an environment, and so that you're quickly ready to react if something were to happen. So situational awareness is certainly important in the workplace, but this is a skill and, um, and a mindset that once you develop it, it becomes second nature and you do it in your everyday life. So there really is an advantage to employees in grasping this. And emphasizing that employees are a critical component to the risk mitigation strategy. It goes hand in glove with, with number one. Next slide. Tips for developing policies and procedures. So as I mentioned, you want to create a process for reporting anomalous behavior. A little later in the deck, I'm going to, I'm going to um, relate a, a real world incident that I responded to in a media um, interview about a situation and a disconnect between not having the right procedures and policies in place to report anomalous activity. You want to encourage alertness and awareness. Certainly you're not, this is not about profiling. It's about, and it's not about, you know, becoming paranoid or hypervigilant. It's about being aware of what's going on in your environment. And, you know, we live in an era where, you know, mobile devices um, are the biggest distraction. We call it the focus lock. You know, things that distract you uh, to a dangerous degree about what's happening in your environment. Think about how many times you may have been driving down the street and somebody's wearing earphones and they've got a mobile device in their hand, they're crossing the street completely oblivious to the traffic and things that are taking place around them. That's dangerous. Mobile devices can be dangerous if, if they're you know, distracting you to a dangerous degree. So you wanna just be alert, you wanna know what's going on around you and um, you wanna consider um, your different worker types. Certainly if you're in an office environment, that environment is gonna be unique from a person that's working in the field. I do a lot of work with utility companies. They're seeing an uptick in violence on their field-based personnel. You know, uh, during COVID, a lot of utilities uh, based on state uh, executive orders, um, you know, people were not required to pay the utility bills with the assumption that they were out of work and people were having a hard time financially. But now those bills have to be paid. And so there's an increase in utility shutoffs. There's an increase in violence on field-based utility workers. So there's a big emphasis on building out situational awareness for people that are in a field environment. We also do a lot of work with, you know, mass gathering uh, facilities, stadiums, arenas, performing arts centers, uh, convention centers, and certainly that's a, a very dynamic and uh, unique environment as well. So, you know, situational awareness is really going to vary depending on the, the environment you're in and just knowing what the baseline is for that environment, knowing what's what's uh, normal and what's not normal. And again, establishing the mindset that security is everyone's job. This is not just security's job. Security generally is, is a small element of your organization. You've got to build a culture of safety and security within your entire workforce. Next slide. So some tips for facilitating training and exercises. Again, teaching people to recognize what's normal and abnormal in their environment. And again, people oftentimes may be reluctant to do this. And so people, you know, don't just snap. If you're dealing with an employee situation, you know, people generally are on a pathway to violence. They don't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to go into work and, and you know, cause wreak havoc or, God forbid, an active shooter incident. They're on a pathway and there are behaviors that are exhibited on that pathway. And you want to get people help and intervention. But certainly if there's a threat for violence of some kind, you want to be able to report that quickly. And so training employees in that regard is very important. You want to review with them, you know, where the entrances are, where the exits, where the uh, safe locations are. People come to work every day and they use the same entrance and the same exit. It's a pattern. Every day I come in, you know, this entrance and I exit this way. And so when something serious happens and you need to run or get out of harm's way, you know, your instinct tells you to go to that exit where you go every day. And that may be putting you in harm's way. So you want to make sure that, you know, everyone is aware of, you know, what the safe rooms are in your facility, where all the entrances and exits are and so forth. 
and you want to include leadership in the training. And, and, and I encourage, you know, all elements of your workforce, in, in, including, you know, um, union uh, personnel. I think it's, um, you know, a good thing to include the union to show that you're, you're taking steps to, uh, you know, enhance the safety and security of all your employees. Um, utilize a, a mixture of tabletop exercises along with the training. They go hand in glove. Um, this thing that we've been doing with the, uh, the uh, Mass Transportation Authority, you know, that involved training and then it involved just a tabletop element of it and then an actual field-based exercise. So there are different, you know, elements of elevation on, on the training, but certainly, you know, conducting the training, conducting on a regular basis, following that up with some form of exercises is optimum. And, and that includes, you know, in unannounced uh, periodic drills, you know, leave a backpack someplace in the facility and see how people respond. Um, you know, this could involve cyber as well. I mean, you might be receiving something, you know, over a cyber network or you can be doing, you know, phishing uh, drills and see if people are understanding, you know, the danger and the elements of risk there and if they're reporting it appropriately. Next slide. Yeah, Bill, I think it's a good time to pull our audience again before we move into some best practices and advice, if that works for you. So we'll go ahead and launch that. And if you'll take a minute to answer the question on your screen now, which is, which of the following steps do you think will be the most important in improving situational awareness at your organization? Do you think it's going to be that employee buy-in, maybe the leadership buy-in? Maybe it's those policies and procedures that can definitely be tricky or facilitating the trainings and exercises. So I'm going to give that just a few more seconds. If you could go ahead and get your responses in now, that'd be great. And then we'll go ahead and share those results so we can all see uh, what's going on. All right. Looks, you know, it looks like facilitating trainings and exercises and the employee buy-in and still the leadership buy-in too. I mean, they're all pretty strong, strongly represented here. Bill, what are your thoughts? Yeah, they are. They are pretty strong. And, um, you know, I, I like to see, you know, kind of a, um, a pattern here because it's going to vary to some degree, you know, uh, based on the organization and based on, on, you know, kind of the culture of the organization. Mm -hmm. But I think these are all important elements and they're probably reflective of, you know, what's individually happening within within, uh, you know, each individual organization. Um, so, you know, employee buy in critical Training and exercises, I would concur that that is probably, you know, the top element of what you need to be doing in this area because, you know, it's, you know, it's a foundational element, you know, training your workforce, exercising it is really going to build that muscle memory. Peter, anything to add? Yeah, I've always looked at this as like a three-legged stool and the development and the implementation of policies and procedures is kind of like the seat that you sit on but the three legs that all have to be there and if they're not the stool falls down is that employee buy-in leadership buy-in and then figuring out how do you go about doing these trainings and exercises in a way that keeps it top of mind for people so just an interesting way to look at it and i think the data here supports that other people view it that way too wow oh, that's a great metaphor excellent well, if you'll go to the next slide, we're going to move on to some advice and best practices that can help you all get started with an action plan. So, Bill, I'm going to hand it back over to you now to explain some of those. Yep, great. Let's go to the next slide, please. So common pitfalls to avoid. Um, you know, we touched upon this uh, a little bit. Um, there is sometimes a um, expectation that the responsibility for um, monitoring threats, you know, being aware of the risk environment is the sole responsibility of the operations center and your security function. And certainly it is a big part of, uh, of their responsibilities, but, you know, it's, it's something that needs to be an element of the entire organization. As we've talked about, you know, situational awareness day in and day out is going to be something that, you know, your everyday employees are going to have the finger on the pulse. You know, I dealt when I was with Homeland Security with, um, you know, improvised explosive devices. And, and what we found 
99% of the time was that an employee would see something suspicious. It wasn't security, wasn't law enforcement, certainly wasn't federal government, DHS. It was the employee on the site that saw something suspicious about a package, a bag, and they reported it appropriately. So, you know, the common pitfall is to think that it's just a, a security responsibility. And, and also to think that, gee, technology is the solution. Technology can be important and, and technology can be an important element of the toolkit. And certainly I'm a big proponent of um, social media monitoring, social media awareness. I think every company um, should have an element of that. It really is not a very expensive um, you know, mitigation strategy to be part of your um, security regime and it can provide great value. So I think you know that kind of technology um, is, is very, very helpful. But again, um, it's not the sole responsibility. This is more of a holistic enterprise approach where you've got security, you're leveraging technology, and most of all, you're, you're training and uh, making sure your people understand you know, what, what to do when they see something that's, not, uh, that's, that's out of the normal. And failure to update or adapt your situational awareness policies and procedures. So, you know, this is a pitfall. And, you know, I've seen it time and again, you, you've got a, an emergency operations plan, you've got policies and procedures in place, but you fail to keep them updated, reflective of the risk environment that we're in. And we're in a very dynamic risk environment. Um, I mean, we've, we've dealt with an, not only transnational threats, we're dealing with domestic terrorism threats, we're dealing with an increase in workplace violence, we're dealing with people that are stressed out over finances, health concerns, social unrest, and we know that stress can manifest itself in violence. So all of these things are, are impacting, um, you know, what takes place in, in the workforce. And so, you know, making sure that your plans and your policies and procedures are reflective of the environment. We're heading towards midterms elections. We know that there's probably gonna be some social unrest associated with that. We're dealing with hot button issues like abortion. We've come through a period of social unrest in, in 2020 after the tragic George Floyd incident. All of these things can manifest themselves in our individual regions, locations where our businesses are. And so you've got to be, you know, building that situational awareness of what's taking place in the environment and making sure that your people are aware of that as well. And your plans particularly have to be reflective of that. Next. So some advice um, on improving situational awareness. So we teach what we call 10 seconds to safety. Um, and again, this is a, you know, we've talked about muscle memory and this is really about building muscle memory. Uh, it's taking a few seconds as you are arriving at a location, whether that be by car, public transportation, or even walking, and, and seeing if everything is normal or if there's something there that, that catches your attention. Um, as, you, as you get closer to your facility, as you enter the facility, as you're getting you know, ready to go on an elevator, or going into the actual uh, office location, you wanna build in those 10 seconds of safety so that it becomes automatic second nature as you're approaching any environment, you're taking a quick glance around to see if something catches your attention. And I always say, pay attention to your gut. 99% of the time, if something doesn't feel right, there's probably something there that warrants closer review or attention. My wife and I went out to dinner in our uh, local uh, town of Wilmington recently, and I'm looking for a parking space. And she said to me, go around the block another time. And I said, what's the matter? So she saw something that didn't, you know, caught her attention. She thought, you know, it might have been suspicious. And she wanted me to find another parking space. She's built in that 10 seconds to safety. And remember the situation awareness is not about profiling or discrimination. Again, we're talking about behavior, anomalous behavior, you know, people that are coming into a facility that are wearing clothes that are out of context with the environment or out of context with the you know, geographic uh, uh, weather and so forth. Uh, people that are, you know, hands in the pocket, you know, per, per, potentially secreting something under a heavy jacket. Um, recognizing that organizations that lack situational awareness are going to be vulnerable to incidents. And so again, those employees that are going to see somebody or see something that they know is out of character, is not consistent with the baseline, 
and that they have the support and encouragement to report that is is important. And if it's not, you know, tragically, you know, we're going to find more and more cases where, you know, those um, those incidents are going to are going to happen and, and, you know, consequences are going to result from it. Um, and, and again, you know, uh, Peter mentioned this. This is not just focus on active shooters. Certainly, situational awareness is critically important in, in an active shooter situation because we know that these situations tend to be over in five or seven minutes or so. And so, you know, the actions you take during that initial period can make the difference between who lives and who uh, who gets injured or killed and who survives. And so situational awareness is critically important in, in active shooter situations, but it's important in every situation. Violence can happen in any way and it can be aggressive in any way. And so, you know, just being aware of that um, and, and, you know, being prepared to deal with it appropriately is, is uh, critically important. Next slide, please. Yeah, Peter, I think we're going to hand it over to you now to talk about communication a little bit, if that works for you. Yeah, absolutely. Super important to try to get people to take up everything that you're promoting. So how do you do that? Well, we started today's webinar by explaining the why. And I'm a firm believer that being forthcoming about why you're asking a person to do something or perhaps to change something can go a really long way in getting them to comply. So when you're talking to your employees about implementing or even just reiterating policies and procedures, you've got to underscore why it's important to the organization, but also to them. In the case of situational awareness, it's really quite simple. I would say that situational awareness can help you protect you, <laughs> both physically and emotionally, <laughs> can help protect your coworkers. Why wouldn't you want to do that? And protect your workplace. And that's where you get your job done and where you go every day. So you want to do that. So make sure you're communicating regularly by developing a specific cadence for your communications. You don't want to communicate too often or extensively, or your employees could start to ignore your messages. Definitely this kind of notification message fatigue can set in, so you have to be careful. Uh, and people will take them less seriously. So find the right cadence that makes sense for your culture or your industry. And it can be vastly different depending on what your people do. Uh, just so your message remains top of mind to them. Again, commensurate with what they're doing from a safety perspective. Clearly someone that's sitting in an office somewhere needs to hear something on a different cadence and about different things than someone working on a factory floor or going into people's homes or something like that. Uh, also, I highly suggest investing in a very robust emergency communication solution with two-way multi-channel messaging. Those two things are really important. You got to be able to get a message out, but also get a response back in real time to help you understand what's going on. And you have to be able to reach people on multiple channels these days. Everyone has a different way they prefer to communicate. So this makes it really easy for employees to both hear about and report on anything abnormal or suspicious in their environments in one dedicated place that's easy for both them to access, but also importantly for you to monitor, track and manage. You have to have a really streamlined way of doing this or it just breaks down. Um, and then hey, finally, Peter. I'd say start. To, yeah, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt, but we have a question about this. So would you mind if I ask it really quickly before we move on? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, someone says employees um, seem to have a sense of security around mass communication systems, that those will always be their first notice. What are your thoughts on mass communication systems during an event? It appears that messaging can sometimes be 20 minutes or more behind. Thoughts? Yeah, and yeah, it's very true. Things can be behind. Look, it, it, in our roles as safety professionals, we try to understand what's going on as quickly as possible making sure that it's real before we bother people with something that may not be real and then getting that message out as quickly as possible. All you can do is the best that you can do. There's no way that you can predict something like in Minority Report, that movie with Tom Cruise. <laughs> that's it's not here yet. Maybe one day we'll get there. Uh, but now you just do the best you can. And that's why you have to leverage people, process and technology. If you can get people out there being situationally aware, they're bubbling things up to you. Uh, if you can invest in tools that can keep an eye on the world around you, um, then you can get those alerts very quickly. And then if you have a good communication tool in place, you're able to get those alerts out to the people who are potentially impacted by something a whole lot faster. So the goal is not to have information to people instantaneously, which is impossible. It's to drastically reduce the window. And it's gone from many times being several hours before people are understand what's happening and communicating it to now you can get it down to just a, a few minutes after something is occurring. Uh, and those, that, that change is, can make all the difference in the world. 
Thank you, Peter. Go ahead and continue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the last thing I was going to mention in this, this slide is just starting to publicly acknowledge and perhaps even reward strong situational awareness. That's how you embed it in your culture. If you call it out, you help perpetuate the behaviors that you want among the many. So everyone sees it and they're like, oh, okay, I should get in on this too. Uh, while also congratulating an individual employee for doing the right thing. People like to know their efforts are recognized. It makes them feel good. All right. Uh, so I think we have one more slide um, I want to cover, and it relates to the best practices on identifying threats. Um, we've talked about this before, but your employees can be extremely helpful in observing and reporting internal threats using situational awareness. But it's important to have that same awareness when monitoring and identifying external threats. In order to improve situational awareness holistically, internal and external, you have to have both frontline support from your people and, I mentioned this before, but the proper tools and technology. Uh, that way, you have eyes and ears on threats that are developing both internally and externally. Internally, your people are looking out. Externally, you know, get tools and things like that that are feeding you information. Uh, internally, it can be as simple as just an employee investigating and reporting. Could be like the smell of chemicals, uh, a burning smell, or seeing an exposed wire. Something that simple could prevent a fire from occurring. Uh, or a suspicious package or person. That's the most common ones you hear about. Finding a security door propped open. That's big. Sometimes people just leave things propped open because it's easier and that's not good for security. Uh, it could be overhearing shouting or raised voices. That could make a difference in getting a situation under control before it gets out of control. Uh, or receiving a text or an email asking you to do something that's unusual. Uh, perhaps the ones you've been seeing a lot lately, like your CEO asking you to click on a suspicious link or send them money because they have a gambling debt in Aruba or something like that. <laughs> it's amazing how many people will fall for that, though. You have to be really aware. Uh, and then externally, there are global threat intelligence solutions to help you identify all sorts of emerging threats in the people and locations that could potentially be impacted by those. Just a, a quick plug on Alert Media, that's something we do here. We've got a team of experts that watches the world combing through social media, police scanners, news sites, uh, you name it. There are hundreds of thousands of uh, incidents going on around the world every day. And basically they verify that everything is real and then feed that information to you once it's been vetted through our product so you can be aware that there's a storm coming, there's a wildfire approaching where you have people living, there's an active shooter that's been reported. Um, the idea is to help you get two steps ahead of something instead of being two steps behind it. So just in summary, relying on a combination of people and technology gonna help you keep your eye on the big picture when it comes to safety and security in your organization. That's the idea. Uh, Bill, do you have some uh, examples of industries or, or companies that improve situational awareness and, and how they did it? I know we talked about this before uh, before the session. Yeah, um, you know, it's interesting that um, I've been doing um, a great amount of work with the retail grocery industry. And, um, you know, uh, if I would have thought about that five years ago when I was the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Critical Infrastructure Protection, um, I never would have guessed that, you know, the threat and risk to grocery stores would have been, um, you know, a, a, an evolving, you know, issue and priority. But the reality is that, you know, grocery stores have been open during COVID when many other businesses have been closed or people have been teleworking. They've been in the front line and dealing with a lot of the stresses that, that other people are, are exhibiting. Uh, we've had some horrific mass shootings in grocery stores most recently in, in Buffalo, New York, at the grocery store there. And so this industry has come to grips with the fact that, um, you know, safety and security is a top priority. And they really have done some, some important things to um, enhance situational awareness for their employees. I mean, some things as simple as color coding the, ent the entrances and the exits, making them more visible. And so you're not guessing where things are having pathways in the aisles, you know, footprints, if you will, where to go, you know, educating people on, on where they can barricade, you know, whether it's a freezer or another office, um, having communication capabilities throughout the facility so that if people are sheltering, that they can communicate. Um, they've taken a lot of these different steps in addition to leveraging technology uh, to enhance the situational awareness of their people. You know, in the case of that, that Buffalo, you know, New York tragedy, that individual came to that grocery store, you know, 
ahead of time. He did surveillance there. He looked at the people that were coming and going. He looked at the time of day. He plotted that attack out meticulously and then wrote a manifesto. He was even confronted by a security guard when he was there because he was acting suspiciously. And what did he do? He came back with full body armor, you know, a military grade weapon, you know, knowing that he was going to get into a, um, you know, shooting confrontation. And so these are serious situations. And, and, and I'm applauding the retail grocery industry for the steps are taken. But there's one example that, you know, was a problem. And I did an interview just recently with a Boston TV station. They had a grocery store and an individual left for lunch, came back, was trying to punch in the clock, was having you know difficulty, was frustrated, apparently was having some other issues and started you know showing some aggression and then commented that he was going to go home, get his gun and come back and shoot everybody. Well, that was overheard by another employee. He reported it to their manager. The manager confronted the individual. That individual was fired, but it took five and a half hours to notify law enforcement because their policies and procedures were that they had to go through corporate and get approval before mm -hmm. they could notify law enforcement of an incident of that nature. Now, fortunately in this incident, there wasn't a tragedy, but the law enforcement went to the home. There were firearms in the house owned by the father. The young man did have some emotional issues. He was arrested um, because it was a, a threat, misdemeanor, but you know he committed the crime. But it just shows that even when people do the right thing, you've got to have the policies and procedures in place to make sure that the right thing is acted upon. The other quick example is utility industry, and we do a lot of work there as well. And many of those are confronted with the challenge of dealing with the homeless. In many cities across the United States, we're seeing more and more people in homeless camps. And those people will, you know, at times engage or confront, you know, workers that are doing work in the field. And you want to be empathetic. You want to be, you know, uh, sympathetic to the cause and the situation. But at the same time, you're in a work environment that could be dangerous. You, you have a crew that, you know, could be at risk. And you've got to have the right training and the procedures in place and being that situational awareness so that, you know, you know how to respond and act upon. And so, We've engaged with our utility industry clients in building that training, and that has helped them develop the policies. And part of their policy is to communicate to their workforce that we support these organizations, we, we donate to help the, the homeless, but you know, at the same time, encouraging them not to get personally engaged at the field-based field level. So those are two examples in the many industries that we're working in that I, I see some, uh, some real progress being made in this area. And I think we have some key takeaways on the next slide. You want to quickly review those, Bill, and then we'll get into some. Yeah. Um, yep. So, you know, um, you know, organ organizations need to be prepared to deal with, you know, a variety of threats. And, you know, one of the things that you need to have in your toolkit is building out situational awareness for your workforce. It's going to mitigate the consequences. You know, there's no perfect security plan. We all know that we can't eliminate risk. Our job is to work smart and focus on where we can mitigate the risks, especially where the consequences can be the greatest. We are seeing an increase in workplace violence. That's ubiquitous. It's happening to all industries. And so building the, you know, the training and the awareness of our staff is going to be, you know, an important way of mitigating, you know, and, and you know, taking the preparedness that you need to do to, to, uh, to mitigate this kind of an issue. Um, situational awareness to, well, it really applies to just being aware of your environment and being aware of your environment is going to help you understand what's abnormal in that environment. What doesn't jive with what I'm, you know, I'm, I deal with day in and day out, whether it's the way a person's behaving, whether it's something I see, smell or taste, there's something here that's not normal. I need to report it. Don't rely on your old policies and procedures and training. You know, make sure you have a current risk assessment. Make sure that you're networking with your local law enforcement organization so that you've got that situational awareness on what's happening outside the environment and then building that tr into your training for your for your people, giving them the skills that they need, you know, uh, to communicate when they see something and also de-escalation uh, training is important as well to, you know, if something's happening and, and the person is getting aggressive, you want your, your frontline employees to have that de-escalation training so that they can tamper it down and get into a more, you know, 
uh, professional dialogue with the, with an individual. And that, that mindset, it's all about, you know, creating a mindset of safety and security. And I can't tell you how many organizations that I deal with that have successfully created that mindset. And they've said to me, Bill, it has not only helped our security, it has also eliminated accidents, it's eliminated lawsuits, people pay attention more and they're reporting things that normally would just go, you know, unreported or ignored. We have now a mindset of safety and security, and it's having a very positive effect in many areas of the organization. Well, thank you so much, Bill. That was excellent information and great insights. And a lot of you are asking for additional resources, and I do have those to share. And of course, I want to get to some audience questions, but we're going to do one final poll right now, if we can go ahead and launch that. This is a really quick one, guys. You know, you've heard some great advice today, but actually, you know, Alert Media has a team of safety and security experts that can help you prioritize situational awareness, help you improve it at your organization. So just take a quick minute to let us know. Are you interested in learning more um, from Alert Media about how we can help you, you can say yes, and we will follow up with some information for you. Or you could say not at this time. And of course, no hard feelings there. So we will give that just another moment or two. And we can go ahead and close this one out and get to our questions. So we have a lot coming in here. Um, all right. So Bill, what what is the expected timeline for seeing improvement for organizations who are super committed to improving situational awareness? You know, I, I always encourage, you know, the crawl, crawl, walk, run, you know, you know, you can't just flip a switch and uh, and change the culture and the mindset of the organization. So you want to be doing this in a, in a methodical way. You want to be building out training. You want to be building out other means of communicating to your workforce about the importance of situational awareness. You want to have some drills. Maybe you want to do some some signage and postage in your facilities. Um, these th this is a, a process, you know, so it's not something that you're going to, you know, flip the switch and happen overnight. Um, but if you've got that senior leadership commitment and buy in, you've got your employee involvement. Um, these things can happen, you know, in, in a quick manner. And sometimes the hurdles are, you know, you know, gee, I've got to convince my, you know, my boss, I've got to convince the VP that this is important. I've got to get some extra budgeting for this. One of the concerns that we've been dealing with is that, you know, people have been so f focused on COVID over the last two years. A lot of resources have gone towards the safety of facilities and the hygiene and making people feel, you know, safe coming back to a clean environment. And that's definitely appropriate. But at the same time, security budgets, training budgets have been impacted. And so I think there's a, a bit of a challenge in some organizations trying to get the refocus on now that things are opening up, now that people are traveling again, now that people are coming back into the office again, we got to get back to some of the basics. And some of the challenges and threats that were there before are going to continue to be there, and in some cases, even greater. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a really important one, so I want to make sure to hit on this. Um, although trends point towards return to office, there are still a ton of work from home employees that don't necessarily consider their home office an extension of the workplace. So educating them about situational awareness is also key. Let me go to you first, Bill, and I want to hear from you too, Peter. What are your thoughts on that? You know, are, are these considered like insider threats if something is happening at a home office or how do people go about you know, categorizing that and uh, communicating with people about that? Well, you know, um, there there have been a manifestation of, you know, uh, violence in, in the home as a result of, uh, you know, people working from home. There's been, you know, domestic violence. There's been, you know, other incidents, uh, you know, when you're, you know, w working at home, you know, eight hours a day, living there 24 hours a day. I mean, that, that can put tension in the environment. So, um, Situational awareness, you know, is somewhat of an element to that. But I would say that the important thing about people that are teleworking and working from home, you're still obviously staying connected to your organization. And what you want is, you know, all the people in your organization to be aware of signs that people might be going through some stress. You know, you're having a Zoom meeting, but you notice that Bill is really disheveled. Bill is, you know, um, got a short fuse. There's some dynamic going on there. 
that I'm observing that I think, you know, Bill may need some assistance from our employee assistance program. Um, I just noticed some things happening, um, you know, based on my knowledge and interactions that I see a pattern here that concerns me. And so I would, I would just encourage, you know, organizations that, you know, include that situational awareness. And again, this is about helping people. This isn't about, you know, you know, trying to get people in trouble. It's about, you know, seeing people that may be on some kind of a pathway or having some difficulties and trying to get them assistance or letting them know that there's people there that they can turn to if need be. And Peter, quick, you know, 10 second addition to this, anything about communication you'd like to add? Yeah, I just one of the podcasts that I recorded with someone, they said specifically that you have to be intentional about how you interact with your remote employees. In the past, when everyone came to an office, you could unintentionally just kind of observe how they were and you get a sense of it. Now, you don't get that at all. There is no water cooler to walk by. So you have to intentionally set up meetings with people and really look for signals that there might be something wrong from a mental health standpoint. I could go on for a lot longer on some of the other stuff about uh, people who work remotely, but I know we're limited on time. Yeah, and I do want to go ahead and get to the next slide to get to some additional resources uh, that we can share with everyone. So as I mentioned at the top of the webinar, Bill's organization is called The Power of Preparedness. It offers online training for situational awareness and preparedness that is customized for your industry and your organization. So if you'd like to employ their services or learn more, their contact information is here on the slide. And then if you go to the next one, Alert Media also offers free adaptable exercises on situational awareness to inspire employee vigilance and increase, increase reporting on anything anomalous. And you can find these exercises and many other free resources at alertmedia.com. And then if you'll just go to the next slide, I just wanted to let you know that you're welcome to get in touch with our speakers today over LinkedIn. They both have profiles set up there. And then Bill and Peter, I just wanted to take a minute to thank you both for being here. And we really appreciate you sharing your expertise with us. Bill, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Very helpful, very informative, and very much enjoyed the conversation. Wonderful. And Likewise, Peter, thank, thank you, you as well for being here. Great. Yeah, no, it was great. Well, if you'll... Yeah, I thought we'd learned a lot here today. And you can flip to the next slide because I do want to make sure we take a minute to thank Security Magazine for being such a great partner and hosting us today. And of course, all of you for joining. And we hope to see your names on a future Alert Media webinar.